Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I made these easy and cute Christmas ornaments with fluid painting on them. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously get yourself some sort of wooden backer. Now, you can DIY this. If you maybe have an old tree or some firewood, you could cut yourself some slabs. I've done that in years previous. It does take a bit of prep work, so this year I decided to just purchase some. And you can get these from a variety of places. I bought mine from Amazon because I needed a large quantity, and I like this banner style one that they had here. Um, and I was able to get 50 of these for $15.99, so if you were giving these out as presents or something like that, it's actually a pretty low cost per ornament to make these. If you don't want this big of a quality, I recommend heading over to Etsy. Not only do they have lower quantities that you can buy for reasonable prices, but they also have a huge variety of unique shapes, even different state shapes and things like that, uh, Disney shapes. So this is a really good way to like customize these to how you want, but also make it simple. So if you're going to do this, you're going to want to get some of these, any shape that you want. Once they arrive, you might want to consider covering these in gesso. I personally didn't, but it would decrease the warping that might happen. I didn't get too much, so it worked out. For this test, I'm going to be using my tried and true Craftsmart, um, and I'm going to be switching it up and actually using this additive that I tested in one of my previous videos just to see if it makes any improvement. I did test that with Arteza or Blick, so this might work better with one of those, but let's get started. I'll only be showing you this with one color because I'm going to do the same thing across all of them, but I'm going to be adding in my paint and adding about one to one ratio of the pouring medium to the paint and then thinning further with water as necessary. I didn't need to use too much water, just a little bit to get it a little bit thinner because I wanted these to, you know, be easy to spread over the, the canvas, well, or ornaments. So that's how I did this. The colors I'm going to be using today are red and green because they're Christmassy. You can obviously do this with whatever colors fit your Christmas tree theme or your theme that you're going for this year. I'm also going to be adding in a little white and then half of them I'm going to do with silver and then half I'm going to do with gold. Get your work area ready to go and you're going to want something to put these up on. You might have a wire rack. I've got some of these little paint triangles that I use to put these up. If The other thing that you can do is stick a little of this blue tack on, which will help put it on. It did stick to the back a little bit, so you might want to put a protective barrier of some masking tape or something on the back if you're going to be using that method. I recommend the wire rack or these little paint triangles to balance and let the excess drip off. I am going to be testing two different pour methods here. One, a dirty cup like I usually do, and also more the directional pour, which is one of my favorite pours. And also, if you're using red and green like I am, this can be crucial to helping prevent some muddying. Um, red and green, even though we're using some additives that should help keep these separated, red and green are on the opposite sides of the color wheel, being their complement. And when mixed together, they do make brown so there is a chance for these to turn out not so pretty so I want to try a little bit of each the top row ones I'm going to be adding gold into and the bottom row ones will be the ones with silver for this I'm going to kind of prep the dirty cup things because even in my directional pours I usually do a little bit of a dirty cup for the center part um, where I pour I'm going to prep all the ones on the top which will have the gold so that my current plan is the dirty cups will have on the top gold, white, green, and red. For my center one, the one that I'm gonna do the directional pour with, I'm not going to include the gold in the dirty cup part of it. I'm going to um, kind of feature that more heavily in bigger ribbons. 
I am speeding through this, so if you are brand new to this, there are tons of YouTube tutorials on how to do dirty cup pours and directional pours, but in essence, for dirty cups, after you've mixed all your colors, you layer them in. Um, I usually put about two different layers of each color in. For the directional one, you're going to give yourself kind of a, a river bank with some colors, and then you'll take your dirty cup and do some stripes, and the point of those is to get things going in one direction, and then you can and fill in with your different colors where it needs to and I repeated that on kind of all of them I really I personally like the directional pores more I like the movement in them and because there's less kind of mixing of colors things are typically less muddy if you're worried about that so if you're new to this I recommend using that method um, over the dirty cup personally but you might like how the dirty cup ones look better on the bottom here the two left ones are gonna be my dirty cup the right side one is going to be my directional pour so that one I didn't put the silver in the in the dirty cup part of this and another thing you might have noticed on my top ones if you're getting a bunch of mudding and you don't like how it is you can always add a few stripes of whatever color seems to be missing while you're still in the process of moving that paint around and sometimes that really helps to save a painting remember that just because you have a plan doesn't mean you have to follow it that left one i wanted to keep doing the dirty cups because i'd prepared them but since i wasn't super crazy about how they were turning out on the top ones i added some extra kind of stripes of color from the very get-go so i would have some more concentrated areas and i definitely think it helped it was a little heavy on the bottom um but you know I also added some extra green to the big block area on this Dirty Cup one. So the Dirty Cup one's gonna work better if you're not using red and green, but let's see how these look dry. All right, so it's the next day. As you can see from the lighting, I've got some sunshine coming in. I let them dry for quite a while and uh, in general, I think they actually look better than they did wet, which is usually the opposite of what I observe. You also notice I did a few extras to the left because I had some extra paint and I was having fun with it. So let's take a closer look at these. Um, one, I am happy with the general finish. I did get some drip on the backside, so I'm going to clean up some of them by painting the backside with some white paint. Um, others I might not worry about too much but I am also happy there wasn't very much warping I was really worried about that with the moisture content of my mixture and how thin and porous that wood was so if you use a similar mixture to me and also similar wood or thicker wood you probably don't need to worry too much about prepping to prevent any sort of warping there are a few of these that I wasn't super happy with, and I want to try to save them a little bit. Um, so let's check out my attempt to do that. I tried saving a few of these ones. Some turned out better than others, so I'll show you the successes, um, because the other ones I just didn't have my ideas completely out. If you've got a Cricut machine or something similar to that, this will probably be a lot easier. You could cut out something really pretty and stick it on there. I don't have one, so I chose to use some paint pens and put a few designs on a few of them. And I, I do think they help certain ones. My main recommendation for what to do on these, if you're doing them by hand like me, is to find some round object that's gonna fit nicely on there. You want a bit of a buffer. Maybe about a quarter inch around it. You're going to trace it on using some of the white. And what I'm gonna do is make a little wreath here that I'm gonna be able to actually design and write something inside of so I chose to do two of these I also tried to do one of the clever and in 2020 we stayed home but my handwriting is not that great so that one I didn't show I also tried to draw some trees on and that one was okay but it wasn't my favorite my favorite were these two where I made these 
little kind of very simple wreaths. So I made a circle and then I just drew little tiny ovals, kind of eye shapes or leaf shapes in right next to each other all the way around it. Then I filled in the center with a nice greeting or saying you could write whatever you wanted here and if your handwriting is better than mine which it probably is it will look nicer uh, I did this one just with white and my paint pens aren't super opaque there is some see-through so I actually improved and I redid this a second time where I put the white down and then I actually put black in the middle and this one turned out to actually be my favorite of all the ornaments that I made. Um, was just kind of the simple 2020 message, and I think that the black kind of in the center of the white, uh, leaving some room to make sure that you see some of the white on the outside, so it's kind of double outlined, looked the best out of everything I did. If necessary, clear those holes of the paint that might have covered them using a toothpick, a pencil. I used a piece of a popsicle stick that I typically use for stirring my paints and just clean that up. And then I used red and green thin ribbon to just put through the holes and I did just very simple knots. So I pulled it through, put... Um, just a normal knot in and doubled it up. Then I cut it a little bit longer. You're gonna want uh, it to hang down so that it actually goes in a branch about two inches. So when you kind of pull that center part up, you want it to be about two inches from where the string is taut to the actual wooden ornament, which is probably going to make your string in between knots about five or six inches long. And once you've put all of that together, each ornament is done. Here are my finished ornaments. I actually really liked how they, they turned out. You can see some of my um, different ones here. And I even went the extra step of getting my little artificial tree out and seeing how they looked. This is a very thin and small tree, so these would look a lot better on a nice big fluffy tree. But in general, I really liked how these turned out and I think they're really good, really cute. I think you could actually also use them to put on presents as kind of name tags for Christmas. So just some thoughts. I hope that you have a magically creative day and I'd like to know if you try this out.